Okay, time to watch Logan. Supposedly this is better than the other Wolverine solo movies. Let's take a look. Okay, that was two hours of my life I'm never getting back. I mean, wow. That was the worst Wolverine solo movie yet! Let's see what the fans are saying about it. Huh. He'll actually seem to love this movie. Well, I'll just watch how it should have ended for inspiration. What is this, a song? They're not even making any jokes! They always make jokes about the movie! Uh, okay, alright. Honest trailers, you're up. That makes the last 17 years of X-Men movies look mad by comparison. And even pays off the prophecy from the Wolverine. Ugh, <clears throat> damn, this movie's hard to make fun of. Really? You too? Does the entire world think this movie is great? Okay, desperate times call for desperate measures. Cinema sins make it rain. Okay, so Logan found this phone in the motel room where Gabriella got murdered. But there are two things that bother me about him watching this video. First, the phone apparently has no auto lock, unless Gabriella went to her settings to prevent the auto lock. My God! Even the biggest jerks on YouTube are struggling to make fun of this. What is wrong with these people? Can nobody find even a single thing wrong with this film? It's got a laundry list of flaws. Nope, no, nope. oh no. This cannot and will not go unpunished. This is my review of Logan. Yeah, for reasons I cannot understand, everybody and their cat seems to love this movie. Some are even saying it's one of, if not the greatest superhero movie of all time. Really? Why? I don't get it! Its pacing is super slow, the hero isn't very heroic this time around, and they spend more time brooding than actually doing anything! So maybe I'm alone in this, but today I'm going to tell you why this film is overrated. This is Logan. The film starts off on a good note, giving us a fight scene between Logan and some hoodlums trying to steal his hubcaps. Logan defeats them, but it's shown that he's now an angry drunk that's making a living by driving a limo. Necesito un hero. Get the f away from me! Oh yeah, and he swears for no reason too. So, I assume we aren't supposed to like him this time around? Set in the year 2029, we learn that no natural mutants have been born in the last 25 years, and most of the ones we knew have died. Already off to a great start. We also find that Professor X is going insane in his old age and can't control his powers anymore. In addition, Logan's healing factor isn't as strong as it used to be, and he started aging, as well as dying from adamantium poisoning. It's kinda sad, really. He can't even kick ass anymore without Clossy Alice. Logan soon meets a guy with a robo-hand named Donald Pierce, played by Boyd Holbrook. Just to establish that he's the bad guy, he decides to do what bad guys do best. Monologue! Buckshot in your door. I heard you was in Phoenix. But then last night, some friends of mine in Texas HP called and told me they found three dead cholos in a pullout on 54. Not unusual, I know. Except one was missing a hand, another one a leg. So they was thinking it was either an escape tiger or Freddy Krueger. So uh, how much more of this do you have to sit through? Oh boy. Buckle up, folks. In fact, this is all over the movie. Long, boring conversations that don't amount to anything. See, I'm not looking for you, Wolvie. Well, not really. I'm looking for someone who's looking for you. Logan, the most amazing Wolverine movie ever! He talks to people, badass! He gives Professor X his pills, badass! And he swears for no reason at all! What a positive role model! Logan! Moving on, Logan discovers that he has a daughter named Laura, played by Daphne Keene. He discovers that Laura was cloned from his DNA, and there are a number of other mutant kids like her, all grown in a lab and bred to become weapons for the military. Subjected to great abuse, the mutant kids escaped, and now Logan needs to take Laura to a safe haven in North Dakota known as Eden. But things go awry when some goons from the lab show up looking for Laura. Logan tries to fight them off, but then he remembers he's old and useless now. So Laura steps in and oh boy, if there's one good thing about this movie, it's Daphne Keene. <laughs> fight Like a Girl just took on a whole new meaning. Stop shooting! She heals! So why did you bring guns then? If you know she heals, then you know that bullets are useless. That's like fighting Aquaman with a super soaker. It's not gonna do much, guys! And now for the reason this is an R-rated flick. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. 
after trying to reel her in like a fish, Laura pulls out an even more badass move. Oh yeah, foot claws. Not even Logan could do that. Daphne Keen, like a boss. After slaughtering half the goons without even breaking a sweat, Laura, Logan, and Charles escape using the near-miss train cliche. But their albino buddy gets left behind and the goons force him to track his friends. Seriously, Logan? You're a soldier! You know the rules! Nobody gets left behind! Especially not a walking GPS! That's a terrible idea! The gang heads on the road and Professor X gives us a long-winded ramble. And by the way, Laura's foot claws are the obvious result of her gender, you know. Is that a fact? In a pride of lions, the female is both hunter and caregiver. Good to know. She uses her front claws for hunting and the back claws defensively. Oh, yeah? Thus ensuring their survival. All in favor of skipping this, thank you! One thing that's immediately apparent about Laura is that she's not too chatty. She's kind of like Ferb. She believes actions speak louder than words. Hi there. You know you gotta pay for that, right? These two. I'll pay with your blood! <laughs> Luckily, Logan steps in and stops her before she kills a man, and the guy's so scared he doesn't even care that they didn't pay for anything. Uh, bro? First thing about being a parent, when your kid breaks something or takes something they shouldn't have, you're supposed to pay for it! God, this guy's a lousy father! The group then heads to a hotel where... Wait, what? They have X-Men comics in an X-Men movie? What kind of metafiction is that? This is like when the gem movie had the cartoon playing in the background! And yes, you could argue that the comics were based off the lives of the real mutants, but come on! Nobody writes comic books about real people! That's called history class! The bad guys catch up to our heroes, but the prof has another manic episode and freezes every human in the hotel. Luckily, being a mutant, Logan is immune to the effects and hobbles upstairs to save X right before he gets killed. So they get back on the road and get in a traffic collision with one of those self-driving Budweiser trucks. No wonder it's a bad driver. It's loaded with alcohol! In auto trucks. Language, Logan. She can learn to be better. You mean better than me? Actually, yes. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Even the film is stating what the audience is thinking. Laura is way cooler than Logan. At 11 years old, she's already twice as bad as Logan ever was. Why isn't she getting more screen time? In the chaos, a family gets run off the road. Charles suggests that they go help the family reclaim their horses, and then afterward, the family is so grateful that they offer them a place to sleep and a home-cooked dinner. That would be lovely. Yeah, it was Logan's fault to begin with, but sure, we'll take a free meal. Dear God, thank you for this great meal. And also, you know those bad guys that are coming to kill us right now that will probably slaughter this entire innocent family because we're here? If you could make those guys get lost along the way, that would be great. But of course, they don't get lost because they have their albino GPS leading them straight to Logan and company. Seriously, why would you stop here? This seems like a really stupid idea. You're just putting these people in harm's way. To protect the world and in the process, save your friends. The girl is a rather small price to pay for that. Oh, yeah, sure. Because when the bad guys make you a promise, the bad guys always keep it. Then X makes the terrible decision to stay the night, even though they know the bad guys are on their tail. What is wrong with these guys? And then we get another long-winded speech. This was, without a doubt, the most perfect night I've had in a very long time. But I don't deserve it. Logan! Long, pretentious speeches that you don't care about, and you will forget them moments after hearing them. But just to be clear, this movie is still awesome. It has to be because it just is. Logan! Then Logan goes with the dad of the family to fix the water. But they meet some racist pricks that cause trouble and, you know, the drill. <laughs> so what was the point of that scene? Of course it was! Sure enough, the bad guys arrive and unleash their secret weapon, which for once is not a portal in the sky, but instead a savage clone of Logan named X-24. But I'm just gonna call him who he really is. Wolverine! That's right, this is what we came to see! This is who Jackman at his finest! He's kicking ass, taking names, and gives about as many f**ks as the honey badger! Why do we have to wait so long for this? You killed Grandpa X! Now I'm going to X you! Get him, Laura. Milk every badass moment of screen time you can get. But Wolverine captures Laura, and then he looks at old man Logan the same way I would. 
Wait a minute, you're Logan? Oh, that's a good one. Whatever, man, I'm out of here. Uh, save the girl. Hello? He's already dead, man. You can't save him. Save the girl. You said you only needed the girl. I told you I was supposed to bring a new tool to bear. Well, how about that? The bad guys lied to you just to get what they wanted. Who knew that would happen? I'll tell you what, there's a moron on board. Moron! Son of a... All these people are morons! Except Laura, she's pretty smart. But everyone else is a moron! But in the heat of the battle, Albino Man decides he's tired of doing the jailhouse rock, and he blows up the van with two very conveniently placed grenades. Really, guys? Why would you leave those in arm's reach of him? Logan and Laura escape, but Professor X dies from his injuries. Oh yeah, isn't that what you wanted? To see your favorite characters die? Hey, how about nice to show Mystique's death? Or Magneto's? Or even Quicksilver's? Oh wait. Mm, what you say? Mm, that you only meant when uh, yeah, no one needs to see that again. Right now, I'm tight. What? Logan! A badass tale about people dying! It will make you cry! It will give you depression! Because... That's what you always wanted to see? Logan! So after they bury Charles Breaking Bad style, Logan gets angry and starts punching stuff. But then he remembers he's old and passes out from exhaustion. Quick, get him some Metamucil! Old people like that, right? Laura takes him to a doctor to get him checked out and... Thank you. What? She could have talked this whole time? She hasn't said a word this entire movie. And now all of a sudden, out of the clear blue, she can talk now? Mira. Mira. Oh, even better. She finally starts talking, and she can't even be bothered to use his native language. Why is she talking no, in Spanish? No, what good will that do? Uh, what is happening right now? So she says the Spanish version of the Winter Soldier's mind control words. Stop saying Jonah, those names. Rebecca, Delilah, Rictor, Jonah. Stop saying those names. Gideon, Stop it. Rebecca, Stop. Delilah, Rictor, Jonah, fine, fine. Gideon. And instantly Logan changes his mind. Weird. So Logan agrees to take Laura to Eden and... Let me drive. Of course. She can speak English, she just didn't feel like speaking it before! And they arrive to find the other kids already there. Once there, Laura finds out that Logan has an adamantium bullet, which he wants to use to blow his brains out. Our hero? And of course, once again, we're ignoring the comics. Adamantium cannot penetrate adamantium. It's indestructible! But we've ignored that rule in the other two Wolverine movies, so why not here? Up next, what do we get? Of course, more pointless filler! Logan! Witness the excitement of people staring at trees! Ah, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about! Logan! The most badass movie in the whole movie! Are you kidding? This sucks! The kids are planning to go to Canada in order to escape the goons, but they get caught up in a battle between them. Well, it's about time we got a cool fight scene! We see all these different mutants with different powers join forces to defeat the evildoers. It even kind of reminds me of the first X-Men movie. Shouldn't we shoot her? And yeah, let's see where she's going with this. Oh, my bad. That was a dumb idea. Ugh. But then Logan gets a miracle serum that restores his healing abilities and makes him stronger. Don't question it. Just go with it. And then he rips all the bad guys to shreds. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that is what I'm talking about. Ripping the bad guys apart. Total badass. And just when you think this can't get any better, Laura joins in and becomes a beautiful father-daughter dance of R-rated violence! Yeah, Logan! And then the serum wears off and he's weak again. Wow, someone really ought to check the expiration date on that. Pause, yeah, it lasts for... Eh, not that long, really. 
The rest of the bad guys are killed, except for Wolverine, who impales Logan on a tree branch. But Laura shoots him in the head with Logan's bullet, ending his life. Hell, that happened to Logan in Origins Wolverine, and that didn't kill him! Why would this Wolverine be so easily killed? Oh well. We had to set out the sweet moment somehow. Logan succumbs to his injuries, even though he could probably just take another shot at that Colossus and he'd be fine, and he dies holding his daughter's hand. The kids bury him and then head off to Canada to create a new life for themselves. But it's not over yet, because Logan can't be stopped that easily. If I know one thing about Logan, he's a survivor. He can't be killed by a simple tree branch. Hell, we saw McNeil stab him with several pieces of rebar and throw him in a lake, and he still survived that! You can't keep a fighter like Logan down. He'll be back. Just watch. At the last second, his hand will burst up out of the rocks. Wait for it! Still waiting. Wait, was that it? What? How can that be it? Hold on, hold on. I'm sure there's a post credit scene or something. No? Really? Huh. What the hell? Couldn't you have at least teased it? Like showing the rocks move a little? Just give us hope. Give us a little hope. That's the problem with this movie. It basically says all hope is pointless. Remember kids, all your friends are going to die. That's what this movie teaches us. Your father will die, just as his father died before him. And you will be all alone left to fend for yourself in this great, big, dark, scary world. This is not a superhero movie! You wanna know why? The main character is not a hero! Throughout most of this film, Logan is an unlikable, angry drunk that swears for no reason and can't even kick ass anymore. And while it does have some cool action scenes, the amount of pointless filler we have to sit through to get to those scenes is unbearable. This movie has about 30 minutes of cool stuff, and the other 107 minutes are completely forgettable. It's dull, it's boring, and it's something we've seen in two other movies. I must say, I do not like the movie Logan. It's no fun! It's a bit of a downer to see these iconic characters reduced to this. The reason I love these kinds of movies is because they're fun and exciting. They show someone who's willing to stand up and fight the bad guys, giving bullies the justice that they deserve. But this movie ends on an extremely sour note. If you wanted to kill off Logan, fine. But that's not the way to end the movie. Let me tell you one thing you could have done differently. Just one thing, and it would have been 50 times more interesting. Instead of Logan, Name the movie Laura. Make Laura the main character and everything else falls into place. You still get Logan and Charles, but you don't get too attached to them because they're not supposed to be the main characters. And the fans get more of what they want. Brutal R-rated action! Look at that! Who wouldn't want to see more of that? I'd like to see how Laura and the others escape from the lab. That sounds really interesting. And with Laura as the main character, you can kill Logan off in the end, but that doesn't have to be the very end of the movie. Instead, after burying him, follow the kids to Canada and show them building a new society, providing hope that maybe, just maybe, mutant kind will survive. And in the process, we make Logan's death meaningful. He gave the ultimate sacrifice. He gave up his own life in order to ensure the survival of his species. And Laura, wishing to honor her dead father's memory, becomes the leader of the new X-Men. And that's how you end a movie! On a hopeful note! One life ends, but many others begin. This movie kind of reminds me of Kick-Ass, in that the title character really isn't the main attraction, and the young female lead is the actual star. The difference is, Kick-Ass didn't take itself too seriously. It had some intense moments, but at the same time it had enough comedic moments that you knew it was trying to satirize comic books as well as pay homage to them. Just walk away from the car and we can forget about this. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> but Logan is as drop-dead serious as a war drama. There's no comic relief to be found anywhere. So the intense, dark moments overpower the film. Couple that with absurdly long shots of them doing nothing, and you've got a film that puts your audience to sleep. Guys, I don't know what you look for in a movie. But when I go to the movies, I want to be entertained. I want to laugh so hard that it hurts. I want to be amazed by the stunning visuals and captivating action. I want to be so totally enthralled in the world on screen that it actually seems real to me. 
But none of that is in this movie. I don't need a movie to remind me how depressing life is. That's what real life is for. If this really was Hugh Jackman's last performance as the character, I really wish he would have gone out on a higher note. But who knows? Maybe this was all just an establishing movie. Maybe we'll see Laura and her friends come back in future films. I certainly hope so, because Logan's death has to mean something. If he died for those kids and they don't rebuild the X-Men, something is very wrong. And I definitely want to see Daphne Keene again. She was awesome! Oh, gotta love that! I'm the Invisible Man. When there's a third Wolverine solo movie, I've got it covered.